Hi everyone, so in my last video I showed you some of the recent drugstore high street products that I picked up and today I'm going to show you them in action so I'm going to do a whole makeup look using just drugstore products including some of the ones I bought and then some of my favourites that I've had for a while. So the look that I'm going to be doing today is very similar to the one I was actually wearing in the drugstore haul that I did which you can go and see here if you want to check that out before you actually watch this one. So it's all going to be focused around a really nice bold velvety autumnal red lip which I got so many comments about in the video so I'm going to show you which products I used to get that. So I'm going to start by priming my skin with a bit of an illuminator and this is one from Revlon, this is the Photo Ready Skin Lights Primer and it's a really nice kind of flesh toned illuminator which just has the smallest little bit of sparkle to it, nothing glittery, nothing too intense but it just gives a nice fresh glow underneath foundation. So I'm just concentrating that on the high points of my face, so the cheekbones, my forehead, down the centre of the nose and a little bit on the top of my lip. I'm going to be using a few pumps of the Bourjois Happy Light Foundation on a Real Techniques buffing brush and I really like this foundation at the moment, it's quite a nice autumnal one because I find that I don't always want something too glowy, if you're wearing a lot of layers and scarves and things you don't want makeup that's going to rub off on them so this has got a nice satiny finish which gives a decent amount of coverage and it's really buildable as well. It just sits on the skin really nicely and it lasts quite well throughout the day. I think as well if you prefer more of a lighter coverage foundation this also doubles up as kind of a tinted moisturiser type product. If you're using your fingers to kind of really blend it into the skin then it does sheer out a lot so you can use it in a much lighter way. Now this colour isn't the absolute best for me so I am going to take it down the neck a little bit just so that it blends in. I do think though there are so many brilliant foundations out there on the high street at the moment, especially from Bourjois they do some really great formulations so the Happy Light and also their Healthy Mix if you want some more radiance. Rimmel's Wake Me Up foundation is a really brilliant one for some serious glow and a lot of moisture if you have slightly drier skin. And I also really like the Revlon um, Naked foundation too which is a really really sheer, um, quite matte satiny textured one so if something really really natural is what you prefer that's a really nice one too. The one thing I do find it quite tricky to find in the lower end high street price range is a good concealer and gone are the days of me absolutely worshipping the collection Lasting Perfection Concealer which I know a lot of people still really enjoy using but I find having used different ones like the Origins one and the NARS concealer it's just really too cakey for me on my skin especially under my eyes which is where I really really need it. One concealer though that I have been enjoying is the Eraser from Maybelline and I think they used to do a foundation version of this but I'm not sure if they sell it in the UK anymore. So this did used to come with a built in sponge applicator on the end but I found you just couldn't get it clean and it was a little bit too unhygienic for me so I ripped that off and now I just twist it up when I want a little bit and I think you can control the amount you get a bit better doing it that way. Pop that under my eyes and on any blemishes that I want to cover up, any redness I have around my face. And then I'm going to buff that in with my trust Real Techniques contour brush and I really don't think I could be without this the concealer it just blends everything in so so seamlessly and I find this concealer smooths over the skin really nicely it's not the best coverage one out there but it does sit really well and stays put for quite a long time I'm not really a massive one for powder but again because I'm wearing lots of scars and layers and things in autumn I don't want my makeup to rub off onto them so I'm going to use a little bit of the Bourjois Java Rice Powder and this stuff gives a really lovely glow to the skin but you do need to use it quite sparingly and I've actually done a post on my blog comparing this to the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder and I think they are very very similar so if you like that kind of sheeny look to your skin, a nice radiance but you want to powder it as well. This is a great kind of cheaper alternative. I find this just sets the skin really nicely and it's quite oil absorbing but it doesn't look matte, it doesn't look cakey at all so it's a real great one if you have slightly oilier skin but you want a nice glow as well. It does have reasonably large particles of shimmer in it though so I do find a little bit goes a long way. So when it comes to bronzer and contouring in the drugstore I really don't think you can beat the sleek contour kit. Now these have been around for such a long time but I really think they are brilliant products and you get the bronzer and the highlighter in there so it's a really great combo. It's got a really nice matte texture which is so so easy to blend in so I just pop a little bit of that in my cheekbone and just buff it in and it's just got the right amount of warmth in it so it's not too cool and it's not too warm so it gives you that nice chiseled effect but it also gives the skin a little bit of colour too. 
And I'm using that on a Real Techniques blusher brush, which I actually stopped using for blush because I found a slightly better alternative. But I find it makes for a really nice bronzer brush. So because I'm going for quite a bold lip, I'm going to keep it very simple on the cheeks and use this colour here from Rimmel, which is Santa Rose. And this is a really nice, slightly peachy, slightly pinky warm tone blush, which I find always works so well with brighter lip colours. And I'm applying that with a Zoeva Luxure Cheek Brush, which is definitely my new favourite thing when it comes to blusher. These brushes are actually really reasonably priced and they're quite good quality too. So they're a nice alternative to the Real Techniques brushes if you want to try something a bit different. I'm going to fill in my brows with the Soap and Glory Archery Pencil and this is my absolute new favourite thing when it comes to brows. I've put down all my high-end products and this is all I've been using since I got it. So it's basically a little felt tip pen and it's really, really thin and it's got a nice sheer colour to it so you can really go in and build up every single little individual hair with it which makes the brows look really natural, really full. It does take a little bit longer than just going in with a powder or using a pencil. But I think the effect is really worth the time that it takes. It's also got a really nice waxy pencil at the end, so you can just go in and fill in any little gaps that are slightly more sparse. So to comb those through and set them in place, I'm going to be using another product that I've been really enjoying. And this is the Maybelline Brow Drama Mascara. It's quite a sheer tinted mascara, so it makes a nice alternative from using clear ones. So it's really great if you don't want too much going on in your brows, you're having more of a natural makeup day, you can just use this alone. And it gives them that little bit of definition, but really helps them stay in place too. So for my eyes, I'm going to be using this amazing palette which I showed you in my last video, which is from Rimmel. And this is one of their HD Glam Eyes palettes in the colour Brixton Brown. So I want to keep things balanced with the bold lips. So I'm going to go for the two bottom colours which are kind of soft warm brown neutrals. I'm going to start by using the lightest one which is kind of like a taupey brown shade all over the lid. And I find these really really pigmented. They go on really well and they're quite smooth and they've got a really nice texture to them. And then with the darker shade, which is kind of a nice purpley brown, it's got like an aubergine undertone to it, I'm just going to take that on the outer half of my eye just to give some definition. And there's so, so many things you could do with this palette. I think the options are just endless. It's a really nice autumnal set of colours. I'm also going to take a little bit of the lighter shade in the palette just on my little finger and dot that in the inner corners of my eyes. And this has got a really nice sheen to it, so it really opens them up. So I do like to put a tiny bit of liquid liner just along my lashes to thicken them up a little bit. And for that I'm going to use the L'Oreal Super Liner, which has got this really nice thin tip, so it helps you get a nice precision line. I've definitely tested out my fair share of eyeliners, and I do really like this one. I think it lasts really well, and it's got a nice thick black colour to it. So last up on the eyes, I'm going to use the Lash Potion Mascara from Revlon, and this is part of their Grow Lashes range, which I did used to really, really like. So this is a new one that I've been trying out. It's definitely not quite as thickening as the actual original Grow Lashes one, but it gives a really nice defined look, so it really separates each little lash, and it gives them some length as well, which is always nice to have. Now this one is supposed to have some kind of treatment and growing properties to it, but I haven't really noticed that my lashes have got particularly longer since I've been using it. And of course on my bottom lashes I'll be using my standard number no. 7 Stay Perfect Mascara, and I really cannot go without this one. It's a brilliant mascara if you find you get smudging or flaking, it just really stays put all day long. Now onto the main event and the bold red lip, and I'm actually going to be using a product from Topshop. I'm going to be using their Velvet Lips in Velveteen Ribbon, and this is a real brilliant dupe for products like the Hourglass Opaque Rouges and the Sleek Matte Me Lipsticks. There are a lot of these lip gloss lipstick hybrid things going around at the moment which have that nice doe for applicator so you can get a real precision application, but that have that really intense pigment and colour of a lipstick. This one goes on so easily and it dries well and lasts for such a long time. These are definitely my favourite type of lip products. So I find the best way to apply these is just just to tap a little bit off onto my hand first because a little bit really goes a long way with this, you don't need a lot. And I just work them onto my lips, kind of really pressing it in, trying to create a stain. And you can see they just gone so, so pigmented. So there you have it, that's my finished look using just drugstore products, and I hope you enjoyed that kind of change up from my usual routine. I've definitely discovered quite a few new products that I'll be incorporating into my high-end favourites, so I hope you enjoyed watching that video, and I will see you all soon. Mm -hmm.